Right, today we're talking about BMW's B58, an engine that people push to upwards of 500 horsepower, track, abuse, and daily drive it. And somehow it just keeps going. But why? Why is the B58 so strong compared to modern turbocharged engines? Why can you slap on a downpipe and tune and suddenly you're making numbers that simply embarrass other BMW engines? Today, I'm breaking down every single engineering reason that makes the B58 a monster. This isn't a fanboy video. I'm gonna go into depth of the actual engineering that makes tuners love this car and why this engine just keeps going and why it's one of BMW's smartest engines they've ever made. So let's get into it. Now, one of the most common knowledge things about what makes the B58 so strong is its closed deck design. Simplified, what this means is the cylinder walls, they're all connected. They're all basically one big piece of metal. Unlike an open deck design found in earlier generations like the N55, which I will add, an open deck design is much better for cooling. When it comes to pushing big boost, and obviously boost equals power, doesn't do so well. Now think about this for a second. When you're running high boost on an engine, the cylinder pressure goes through the roof, and that pressure has to go somewhere. With a closed deck design, it's a lot more enclosed, and it holds it better. With an open deck, you can get head lift, the walls can warp, loads of issues form, and when seals are broken, that's when big issues appear. And with a closed deck design, the walls basically say no. Yes, there is no to a certain extent. Pushing a thousand horsepower on a stock B58 isn't going to end well. Now here is something for you to think about. If BMW made the B58 with a closed deck design for the factory, why do you think that is? Because they knew tuners were going to use it. They knew tuners were going to push this engine hard, so they prepared the engine for it. Now I'm almost certain, if I'm not mistaken, this might be a little bit of a fun fact, but you guys can correct me in the comment section. The B58's engine block is based on a diesel design. And if you know anything about diesels, they're very strong engine blocks. So already BMW overbuilt this engine from the factory. And maybe this sound, the deep grunt that the B58 has, is that down to the fact that it has a diesel design block? Who knows? Now we understand that BMW built this block to be very strong, but their over-engineering didn't stop there. Now you can't see it, but inside here, in the actual cylinder walls, there is some crazy stuff going on. Now, BMW used something very clever in their cylinder walls. It's called LDS, wire arc steel coating. Basically, what BMW do is they melt metal wire with an electric arc, and they then spray that into the cylinder walls. Now, this coating, you can't even see it. It's incredibly thin, 0.3 millimeters in fact, but it is incredibly strong. Now you get two benefits with this. Better cooling, it's so thin, that the heat can transfer to the cylinder walls better and also less friction. The cylinders, the actual pistons themselves can move way more freely in the cylinders itself. Lower friction and better heat management are really good when it comes to making high power with boost. Think about this for a second. If the engine itself runs cooler and also with less friction, what does that cause for reliability? Well, the engine can be way more reliable for a lot longer. It's an underrated part and it shows when you tear down a high mileage or abused B58, it shows little to no signs of wear because of this. Now this is where things get spicy and I'm going off information I found online to the best of my knowledge. You can correct me in the comment section. We're going to be talking about the forged parts in the B58 itself. Now long story short, having forged parts in your engine basically makes it 10 times stronger. It means it can push power a lot more reliably and from my knowledge the B58 comes with a forged crankshaft and also forged connecting rods. Now making forged parts they basically compress the actual metal as it's being molded and what this does it basically the grain of the actual metal itself changes its chemistry and it is just way stronger when it is actually made compared to cast iron parts for example. Now combining a few internal forged parts with an actual closed deck design of this engine basically it's asking to be bulletproof. Now as a lot of you guys will know I used to have an M235i and I loved that car and that came with the N55. One of the crazy differences with this car though with the B58 is the cooling design. Now in my opinion it's one of the smartest things ever created when it comes to modern car technology. Now like some M cars the air intake manifold itself uses an air to water cooling technology. This shortens the path that the boosted air has to take, which also then helps with heat management. It doesn't just stop there, it also helps with reducing turbo lag and also way more consistent air intake temperatures. Now the cooling system of this engine actually run with two water pumps, one mechanical pump and also one auxiliary pump. This one actually pumps for a little bit longer after you've turned the engine off. This helps cool things like the turbo and just all around the engine, basically getting rid of all of that heat soak. There's also a part called the rotary valve, which basically dissipates heat management throughout the engine. If you want me to make a video going into more detail on that let me know now what's one of the main failures with turbocharged engines or turbos in general that is heat bmw over engineered the heating management system with this engine they literally thought of everything when it came to it now we've talked about the engine itself but there's also a very other strong component on this car and that is the turbo now it's going to be very difficult to see but the turbo for the b58 is all the way down there it's a single turbo and it's twin scroll a lot of people get confused by that they think it's a twin turbo engine
engine it's not it uses one turbo but it's got the twin scroll functionality now yes that turbo is a little bit over engineered and again it's a bit stronger than other bmw engines in the past it is bigger for example it's bigger than the n55's engine again n54 has twin turbo so it doesn't really count it doesn't just rely on a bigger turbo to make the power and keep this engine really strong though it uses efficient airflow like we talked about the water to air cooling system as well as shorter paths for the air to actually take this again reduces more parts that are prone to failure and breaking now here's something that most people don't actually know the b58 actually belongs to bmw's modular family where around each cylinder is about 500 cc and that applies for the b48 which is a four cylinder basically mini b58 so why does this matter well like we talked about the diesel version of this block that block is designed to take incredibly high pressures within the engine itself having a petrol version well it's just exceptionally over engineered because petrol engines don't need to maintain the strength that diesel engines do when it comes to maintaining that pressure now it's all good talking about the facts listing them and me explaining to you about what's in this engine bay but it doesn't mean anything without real world performance facts Acts, as well as actual cars showing how capable this engine is for one look at these clips on the screen right now you tell me if you think this b58 is happy or if it is living through hell right now Now, personally, I'd never put my car through that, but it just shows that these engines hold up to so much. And even this car has been tested. I've had this car on the dyno running a stage two tune, and we're pushing about 450 horsepower, about 384 wheel, which is crazy. And that's all on a completely stock engine with just a few little upgrades. So what about reliability with these type of numbers? Well, I'll give you two things. My personal opinions on the reliability I've had and also real world examples. My opinion is it's been faultless. Again, like I've mentioned in many of my videos, if you keep on top of the maintenance, the car's going to love it and it's going to go for a lot longer now the real world failures well they're not the things you might think of they're not the pistons they're not the rods they're not the rod bearings like previous bmw engines they're actually really simple things like oil filters leaking pcv valve issues coolant leaks these are all things that have really cheap and somewhat simple remedies the actual core itself of this engine very rarely fails unless you're pushing crazy power or doing stupid things on a stock engine then obviously you're asking for it to fail now, if this car comes out of the factory with about 330 horsepower and now it's at 450 without me touching anything inside the engine, don't you think BMW over-engineered this from the factory? Don't you think they knew tuners were actually going to push this car and people were going to do crazy stuff with it? Before we finish off this video today, though, we've got to talk about a few misconceptions that come along with this engine. And people think because this engine is so strong that it's flawless. Let me tell you something. It's definitely not. Now, one thing we could talk about is the closed deck design. While that's good for pushing crazy power, that closed deck design sacrifices a little bit of heat management, meaning the engine can get hotter quicker and it can't cool itself as well. Now, I've heard this one on the Facebook group loads of times before. The B58 is basically the N55. No, while they share some key things, the actual architecture of this engine is completely different. Like we talked about, the block, the cooling, the design, they're big changes. So no, it's not your N55. Now, if you followed the channel for a long time, you'll know I used to have an N55. Now people think I'm a B58 fanboy. No, I love both engines equally. I personally prefer the N55, especially when it comes to sound. Now, another thing is people think the turbo is too small for this engine. That's also completely wrong. You can almost hit 500 horsepower with the stock twin scroll turbo. Another good thing about that is it spins up fast. It's got really good airflow. If you want to stick a massive top mount or bottom mount turbo on there and go for the mid 650, 700 horsepower, then do it because this engine can take it. So we've talked about a lot in this video, but what makes the B58 so strong? I'm going to list five things right now. The closed deck block. That's a really strong design. We've got the integrated water to air intercooling system. The advanced cooling system on this car is another massive thing. The modular block design from the diesel engine family, and also it's high compression and efficiency when it comes to making that power. And the list goes on. There's a lot more to say, but all these little things add up. They add up to making an engine being able to produce way more power than it did out of the factory. So if you've come this far, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching today's video. If I helped you in any way, then leave a comment down below. If you've got a B58 or you're thinking of buying one let me know how it's been for you has it been reliable like mine or has it been an absolute pain in the neck be sure to leave your comments down below and i will answer them apart from that thank you guys so much for watching today bye for now